In a daring announcement that could change our understanding of the cosmos, scientists have revealed the discovery of a new celestial body, an enigmatic planet unlike anything we've ever seen before. NASA, a space agency celebrated for its groundbreaking contributions to science and exploration, has once again captured global attention. This planet is not only fascinating for its sheer size and peculiar location, but also for something even more mysterious, it emits light patterns that appear to be artificial. Could these luminous anomalies suggest the existence of life? Could we be standing at the threshold of a cosmic revelation that might reshape the very way we perceive our universe? To answer these profound questions, we must delve into the efforts of NASA and its ambitious space missions. In 2007, NASA launched the Dawn spacecraft with the primary objective of investigating two of the most intriguing and least understood bodies in our solar system, Vesta and Ceres. The spacecraft was unique, powered by three ion engines, an advanced propulsion technology that allowed it to glide silently across vast distances with remarkable efficiency. This innovation gave Dawn the ability to perform a historic first, to enter orbit around two different celestial bodies in one mission. Dawn began its journey with a 14-month intensive survey of Vesta, the second largest asteroid in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. As Dawn sent back stunning, high-resolution images and streams of scientific data, researchers were astonished by Vesta's rugged terrain, impact basins, and complex geological history. This massive asteroid turned out to be more than just a chunk of rock, it was a time capsule from the early solar system. But the most captivating part of the mission was still ahead. After completing its objectives at Vesta, Dawn set its sights on an even more enigmatic target, Ceres, the largest object in the asteroid belt and classified as a dwarf planet. Thanks to its ion propulsion, Dawn was able to leave Vesta's orbit and begin the second leg of its journey, something traditional chemical propulsion simply could not achieve. As the spacecraft approached its new destination, anticipation grew within the scientific community. Ceres was first discovered in 1801 by Italian astronomer Giuseppe Piazzi. For over two centuries, it remained largely a mystery, often overshadowed by its more famous neighbors. Though it was once considered a planet, then reclassified as an asteroid, and finally a dwarf planet in 2006. What makes Ceres extraordinary isn't just its classification but its unique characteristics. With a diameter of roughly 950 kilometers, Ceres is not only the largest object in the asteroid belt, it's also the most massive, containing about a third of the belt's total mass. When Dawn finally began its approach to Ceres in early 2015, it marked a major milestone in our quest to understand the building blocks of the solar system. As the images streamed in, scientists were struck by the presence of bright, reflective spots scattered across Ceres' surface. These were not random patches of ice or light glints. They stood out starkly against the dark, dusty terrain, particularly in a large crater later named Decatur. The scientific community buzzed with theories and speculation. Were these lights simply reflective ice patches? Could they be signs of ongoing geological processes? Or were they something entirely different? Before dawn, our best view of Ceres came from the Hubble Space Telescope, which captured low-resolution, blurry images that revealed little about the dwarf planet's surface. The arrival of high-definition visuals changed everything. Ceres' surface, once a distant blur, now appeared as a dynamic landscape with ancient impact craters, mysterious ridges, and most notably, the now famous bright spots that gleamed like cosmic beacons in the darkness. The leading theory soon emerged. The bright spots were likely composed of highly reflective salts, specifically sodium carbonate, left behind by the sublimation of briny water that had once erupted from the interior of Ceres. This phenomenon is linked to a rare but captivating process known as cryovolcanism, where icy volcanoes release water, ammonia, or other volatiles instead of molten rock. The idea that Ceres might still be geologically active came as a shock. It was previously thought to be a cold, inert relic from the early solar system, but this new evidence painted a far more dynamic picture. Ceres' uniqueness doesn't end with its bright spots. Its composition sets it apart from the typical rocky asteroids in the belt. Instead, Ceres shares more in common with icy bodies like comets. 
Its surface is made up of a mixture of water ice and hydrated minerals, including clays and carbonates, which suggest a less dense, more porous structure. This indicates that Ceres harbors a significant amount of water, so much so that nearly half of its volume may be composed of ice. Beneath its rocky crust lies a muddy mantle, likely made of rock and brine, encasing a core that may contain dense materials such as silicates. Scientists theorize that radioactive decay could have warmed Ceres' interior in the past, allowing liquid water to exist and possibly flow through underground channels. If true, this would make Ceres one of the few places in the solar system, besides Earth, where water in liquid form has likely existed for long periods. Adding even more intrigue is the detection of ammonia-rich clays on Ceres' surface. These compounds are typically found farther out in the solar system, suggesting that Ceres may not have formed where it currently resides. Instead, it may have originated in the outer solar system and later migrated inward. The presence of ammonia also has another implication. It lowers the freezing point of water, making it more likely for briny mixtures to remain liquid beneath Ceres' surface. All of this has profound implications not only for our understanding of Ceres but also for the potential of life elsewhere in the solar system. If Ceres has underground reservoirs of brine or even transient flows of liquid water, it could create environments where microbial life might exist, or may have existed in the past. Cryovolcanism, in particular, offers one of the most fascinating clues. Unlike traditional volcanism, which reshapes planets through rivers of lava and explosions of molten rock, cryovolcanoes on Ceres quietly spew out slurries of water and salts. When this brine reaches the surface and encounters the vacuum of space, it rapidly sublimates, leaving behind highly reflective deposits. This process is thought to be responsible for the mysterious bright spots in a cater crater and other regions across the planet. One specific area, named Cerealia Facula, located at the center of a cater crater, has become the poster child of these phenomena. It is one of the brightest regions in the entire solar system and has exhibited hazes that rise and fall with Ceres' daily cycle. These hazes, observed by dawn, are believed to be caused by sublimating water vapor, a strong indicator that cryovolcanic activity may still be ongoing, or at least occurred relatively recently in geological terms. Even more remarkably, these bright spots are not isolated. Dozens of them have been identified across Ceres' surface, each with distinct features, compositions, and surrounding terrain. Some show signs of repeated activity, while others appear older and more eroded. This widespread distribution suggests that Ceres has been, and possibly continues to be, a geologically active world. As Don continued to survey the surface, it revealed a complex network of ridges, fractures, and layered deposits. Each crater and fissure told a different chapter in Ceres' long and dynamic history. The more we saw, the more we realized how little we truly knew about this remarkable world. Ultimately, the Dawn mission has not only changed our view of Ceres, it has forced us to reconsider the nature of small bodies in our solar system. It showed us that even the seemingly unremarkable can hold stunning surprises. As we process the data and continue to analyze the bright, mysterious lights on Ceres, one question remains at the heart of our curiosity. Could these strange glowing patterns be signs of something more, a clue to life beyond Earth, or even the fingerprints of intelligent design? Only time, and future missions, will tell. But one thing is certain. The mysteries of Ceres are far from solved, and the journey of discovery has only just begun.